Hello, and thank you very much for watching. This is a tutorial on how to use a program called Quartz Composer for Mac. It's a really nice program which enables you to make things like animated backgrounds, transitions, and effects for iMovie. The download link is in the description, but in order to get to it, you'll have to register as an Apple developer. It's nothing major, it does ask you to enter in your address and phone number, I think. But you can honestly just enter in fake details, it won't make a difference at all. And Apple has much better things to be doing than uh, caring if you do. So, without further ado, let's open up Quartz Composer. Okay, so the first time you load up Quartz Composer, you'll get something that looks like this. Just choose basic composition and we'll work from there. Hold on, I'll just get rid of this, get rid of this. Okay, so this is the area in which you actually build your project. In order to build, your, you basically build your project through these box thingies called patches. Each patch does a different thing and each patch either has a set of inputs to the left of it which control what the patch does, or outputs to the right of it, which can control other patches. Okay, so if we load up the viewer using the viewer button, we can see that our animation is blank. And, well, that's probably not too difficult to see why, since we don't have any patches. Well, apart from the clear patch, but we'll just ignore that. All it does is change this, the background colour. Okay. So we open up the patch library and we can see all of the different patches that we can include. But the most important patch is the sprite patch. And what that does is that it draws an image to the screen. Okay, you can see that it's got a bunch of inputs. And at the moment, all it's doing is drawing a white square. We'll get around to changing the image later, but right now, let's have a look at all the different inputs we can have. To do this, open up the patch inspector. You can also use parameters, but I prefer the inspector. And uh, the X position, if you just either use the dial or type numbers into the box, either one will do. X position is the horizontal position. Y is the vertical position, and Z is the in-out position. X rotation is the angle along the X axis, which means it rotates in that direction. Y rotation is in that direction, and Z rotation is in that direction. Width and height control the width and height, kind of self-explanatory really. And color changes the color. Blending, you should keep it over. If you set it to replace or add, then it uh, messes up with transparency. So, everything's fine. Okay, well it's all very well and good having a white square to look out, but maybe we should use an image. So if we just drag an Im- oh great. <laughs> if we just drag an image in, like so. Here we go. Well, we've got the image, but we don't yet know what to do with the image. So what we have to do is to link the output of the star image to the input of the sprite, like so. Okay, so now we've told Quartz Composer, draw the start of the screen, basically. Okay. If you want to change the background colour, just edit this clear patch. Use the patch inspector. Go to clear colour. You'll want opacity to be up to maximum. Opacity just means transparency, so if it's at 0%, the image will be invisible. So obviously you'll want it at 100% if you want to be able, able to actually see the background colour. Okay. If we want more stars, then it's just a simple copy and paste. And 
the stars are on top of each other, so I'll move this one over here. Uh, maybe slightly up a bit. I'll move this one to the side. Maybe I'll make this one a tad smaller. Okay, that'll do. So, adding text is kind of similar. Um, if you want to add text, then go to the patch library and find image with string. You can use the search box down there to make your life a lot easier. And all this does is it converts whatever text you choose into an image. And then you can use that image to feed into Sprite. So if we just drag there, there we go, text. If you want to change what the text actually says, open up the patch inspector. Um, I'll change the font actually to Helvetica. It would help if I spelt it right. And there we go. Okay, a font size of one will make it less blurry. And if I just put it in the center again, Maybe make it slightly wider and less tall so it's clearer to read. And here we go. So we have a nice little starry background. And it's all very well and good having a starry background. But let's export this into a format that we actually want to use. So there are three ways of doing this. The first way is by going to File, Export as QuickTime Movie. But for some reason, the, mo the movies produced don't really work for me. I'm not sure if it's just my computer or, well, what it is actually. But anyway, if that doesn't work, then the second way is using a screen recorder. I would show you how to do this personally, but I'm currently using a screen recorder to record this tutorial, so... I can't really do it. Um, in case you're wondering, um, I'm using QuickTime at the moment. It should be on your computer by default. So just use that. It's File, New Screen Recording. Anyway, there is another way, but it's probably the most dangerous. Um, and that is using iMovie. So we'll just find iMovie. Here it is, right click on your iMovie uh, application, show package contents, go to contents, make a backup of the resources folder. Seriously do that, because if you mess something up then you kinda don't want to have to reinstall iMovie. You can just replace the resources folder with your backup. Okay, let's just save this. I'll save it as stars.quartz. Now uh, copy that. And we'll paste it in here. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is replace one of the existing iMovie backgrounds and change it to the one that we've made. So which one should I? Uh, okay, I'll replace this one. So I'll just copy the name. I'll call it something else. And find where, where we put our stars background. Um, here it is. So we'll just paste the name in there. And... With any luck, when we load up iMovie, instead of having our boring old silk background, we'll have our nice, exciting, starry background. If iMovie will ever load. Here we go. Okay. I'll get rid of this. And if I go to the backgrounds button, 
then find uh, cell orange, which I think is the one we, yeah, it is. Okay, so we can see that our background has appeared there. Okay, so there we go. You can either use, uh, keep your silk orange background with the starry background and then use that for whatever video you're going to make. Or if you want to share it, maybe go to share, export movie, and just export it as whatever you want. I'd recommend going for HD if you do decide to do that. Do this though. Anyway, so that's the tutorial. Hope it's been of any help. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And of course, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this.